I know a lot of us are struggling to keep our homes clean and tidy and decluttered. If you've heard of the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, atomic actually means like really tiny. And so these are kind of like tiny habits that you can work into your day. I know the book's not about decluttering, but there are so many of these habits that you can apply to your everyday clutter, to your decluttering, and, and just in general. So if you're looking for some decluttering help, today I've got seven atomic habits that you can take on today. You can start these all today and they are going to help you get a handle on your clutter. You're gonna love them. And these are all inspired by the book. So in the book, the author identifies this study that says the more that we identify with a belief, the more that we act in a way that doesn't contradict that belief. So if you're going around saying, well, I'm just a mess, I'm just a cluttered person. Well, guess what? That's what's gonna happen because that is the way that your brain works. Instead, even if you don't believe this, but instead you're gonna go around and you're gonna say, I am an organized person. I am a tidy person. I have my house and my clutter under control. And guess what? It's gonna happen. Because when you start to say that you are these things and then you have this belief, it naturally starts to actually happen. And then you start to believe it and you start organizing and decluttering under this new identity. I read this and I loved it so much because this is exactly what happened to me. I was so tired of having like this messy house and I just one day told myself, you know what? I am an organized person and I'm gonna get on top of this. I'm gonna make this better. And guess what? The pieces started falling into place. And I really like this tip as well because I think it helps to build your confidence. If you stop believing things about yourself that really aren't serving you, you really start to see that it's like a fake limiting belief that you've almost told yourself. It's almost the idea where if someone influential in your life told you something negative about yourself and then you would start to believe it. Think back to like if you had like a parent or like a boss or somebody who just said something negative about you and you kind of think, oh wow, yeah, I must be that way. But don't believe it because it is not that way. I actually heard this quote the other day that I'm just gonna slip in here because I thought it was so interesting. The past and the future are not real. This quote comes from the book, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. I'll just put it up so that you can see it. But that quote really spoke to me. I have not read the book yet, but after hearing that quote, it's definitely on my list. So we are focused on the now. That is what I'm saying. Like the past is not real. The future is not real. The only thing that's real is now. And so that is what we are going to look at. So you're going to get rid of this old version of yourself, whatever you've told yourself, whatever, whatever other people have told you, you're just gonna get rid of it. And now you're gonna have a new identity and a new belief about yourself that really fits in with the lifestyle that you want. Okay, the next habit is all about your environment and it is about setting your environment up to meet your goals. There are so many fascinating stories in this book that are all about the environment and how that influences the habits and the choices that we make. There was one that I particularly remember and it was about US servicemen in Vietnam. The ones who had been doing drugs when they were over in Vietnam, when they went home, so they had this drug addiction problem, when they went home, they found that the vast majority of those people actually stopped using the drugs the minute they changed the environment. They didn't do any treatment, they didn't get any help, they simply left Vietnam, came back home, and the problem corrected itself. And this happened with 90% of them. And I'm not saying anything about drug addiction or anything like that. I am simply using this as an example to tell you that the reason we make those choices is it's our environment. So how do we apply that to our home and creating the beautiful home that we want? I have a few ideas. One of the things is I like to put a donation bin in an easily accessible area. So I like to keep one in my closet and that kind of sets my closet environment up for decluttering. So as I'm going through my day, as I'm picking out clothes, deciding what to wear, I can quickly and easily put something in the donation bin. I also like to think of this one on the flip side. Say that you drive home from work and you always go by this particular store and you end up buying things even when you weren't planning to just because you've gone by that store. You know what? Take a different route home. Just really just shift your environment so that you're not doing all of these things that cause you to get cluttered in the first place. If you're enjoying this video, hit that subscribe button down below. It is free and I make videos twice a week. The next habit here is all about motion versus action. And Clear makes a very important distinction between the two in the book. Motion 
is preparing to take action. And I think we fall into motion a lot of times. And sometimes we fall into motion actually to avoid action. I see this all the time. I mean, I do it myself all the time. You know, sometimes when you're in motion, you're like strategizing and thinking about things and you're planning, which is fine, but you're not exactly making progress. Action, on the other hand, is the type of thing that's actually gonna deliver that progress. So just like to hammer this point home, watching this video right now about decluttering, you are in motion. You know, you're getting some motivation, you're learning about clutter, you're learning about decluttering, that is motion. But then actually starting to declutter, you will suddenly be in action. And maybe you're decluttering as you're watching this video, which would be awesome. To get the action and get the results, my tip here is make your plan, you know, watch the videos, do the things that you wanna do, but actually make your plan and then stick to it. And you're gonna kind of go through your stuff. You're gonna go through the plan. You're gonna check off the list. You're gonna tell yourself, I'm gonna do this for 15 minutes every day until I have the end goal and the result that I want. You could even do five minutes a day, or maybe you don't wanna do it every day. Do 40 minutes on Saturday. Work out the schedule that you want and then stick to it. And by doing that, you're going to naturally be in action. One thing I like to apply here, Clear has this thing that he calls the two minute rule. And the idea is you just do the action for two minutes and that kind of gets you accustomed to doing it. And then once you're accustomed to it, it makes it more likely that you're actually gonna repeat it. Just a small thing, but I thought it was really interesting. One of the central ideas in the book is about identity-based habits. So it's basically, instead of focusing on the outcome, like I wanna have an uncluttered kitchen cabinet, so instead of focusing on that outcome, you're gonna focus on the type of person that you want to become. So this is kind of like similar to the first point that I made, but I wanna take it a little bit further and kind of talk a little bit beyond decluttering and talk about the habits that we have that make us cluttered. One identity that I hear a lot, and I even see it like, I'll hear my friends say it or whatever. And, and one identity is, I'm a shopaholic. I, that's just the way I am. I love to shop, I'm a shopaholic. Or I deserve this, like I've worked hard. I deserve the things that I'm buying. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy them and treat myself. I just buy things that I think we need. I don't plan, I just, when I think we need something, I would just buy it. So if you notice, all three of these identities and these types of people are people who are going out and buying things and bringing a ton of stuff into their home that they don't need, which is getting in the way of having an uncluttered home. So when you're working really hard to declutter, don't undo all of that good work and then just go out and buy things. Because if you continue to bring stuff in your home as things are leaving your home, you're just never gonna get there. You're never gonna get on top of it. You're never gonna get that outcome that you want. So instead of identifying around consumption, why not try to identify yourself in a way that supports your decluttering goals? So here's a new identity for you to try out. It is that I am an intentional consumer. I only buy what I need, what I use, and what I love. Or I am careful with my money because I want financial freedom. It's really like a subtle shift, but it is so impactful. And once you start shifting your thoughts on this, you will see these things fall into place. Clear says this really like interesting thing in the book. He says the most practical way to change who you are is to change what you do. It's literally that simple. So every time you're out there and you choose not to buy or bring home something that you don't need, you are taking that action and you're using it to support that identity, the person that you want to be, and we're living into that identity. The next one is habit stacking, and I've actually talked a little bit about this because I use it all of the time. What habit stacking is, is it is taking advantage of a habit that you already have, so something that you just automatically do now, and then you're going to stack a new habit on top of it, and you're going to sort of pair those two habits together. So think of the things that you have a habit of doing. You know, that could be brewing a pot of coffee, or brushing your teeth. And once you identify what that habit is, what is another habit that you can stack on top of it? One of mine that I've been doing recently is when I'm emptying the dishwasher, I will be putting the dishes away and then I will have the cabinets open. And so I've stacked a habit of like a small decluttering activity here. So I will put some dishes away and then I will simultaneously kind of look through the cabinets and decide like, is there anything in here that I'm not using anymore that we don't need and that isn't serving us? And then I can just pull it right out. No big deal. I've just stacked it in with my regular dishwasher emptying. 
The next one here is mindset tricks. And it's just a little trick that you're going to do so that you could stick with a good habit. One way I like to trick myself is I will say, I'm just going to declutter for five minutes and I will set a timer for five minutes. And then it's kind of like tricking me because the funny thing is anytime I've ever done this, I end up going way longer. I just kind of get into it. I'm like, oh, this isn't so bad now that I'm going, but I've tricked myself into starting because at first I was like, well, I'm only gonna do it for five minutes. So I just jump into it. I've shared this other trick before. It's kind of like this three, two, one thing that I do. If I wanna spur myself into action and I'm just like not feeling motivated, I will count backwards from three in my head or you could do it out loud and I'll just go three, two, one. And when I get to one, I have to jump up and do whatever I'm putting off. This little trick just motivates me to actually do it. Another trick, actually one of my subscribers mentioned this to me and she said, instead of going into something like into a space and saying like, I have to declutter this space, just go into the space and look at it. You don't have to do anything but look and subconsciously you will start making plans for that space. You will start thinking about how you're gonna t tackle this project. I love this trick so much because there's no expectation. You are simply looking at the space, but guess what? It's a mindset trick and you're gonna trick yourself into decluttering. The last atomic habit is habit tracking. I use this one a lot for health purposes. I love using it for things like if I'm tracking like how much I'm working out or tracking water or something like that, but it works so well for decluttering, especially if you're the kind of person who likes to sort of make a plan and go through it and check things off your list. If you can actually track things and you see what you're doing, it motivates you to keep on going. It motivates you because you know that you're making progress. I did this a couple of years ago. I had like two weeks off in between Christmas and New Year's and I had a ton of decluttering to do. My kids had gone from like babies to toddlers. So I had just a ridiculous amount of baby stuff that I needed to get rid of. And I have three kids, so it was like stuff from all three of them. So I just, between those two weeks, I made a huge list of all of the things that I needed to do, everything I wanted to accomplish, and guess what? I accomplished all of it. The tracker really kept me motivated and accountable. On the flip side, a couple years ago, I also had the same time off for New Year's. I didn't write anything down. I didn't make a plan. I, I knew that I needed to do stuff and I knew what I needed to do, but guess what? I never did it. So for this one, all you need is a pen and paper, Write down exactly what you want to do, what you want to declutter, and what you want to get done, and you will get it done. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. The book is great. If you're looking to read it, I highly recommend it. I think there's so many principles that can be applied, not only just to decluttering and keeping your home tidy, but just your, your life in general. I'm going to link a video here. Go ahead and click it, and I will see you over there. Bye-bye.